Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel. Um, this introductory, introductory uh, segment is going to be covering basically two separate videos. Um, we're going to be installing Guardian plates, which are manufactured by Chris over at Talon Manufacturing out of Florida. Um, so those of you who uh, are familiar with Stone Voss um, care, uh, uh, awning replacement fabrics, this is the other half. This is the other half of that um, business group. So um, Chris is a great guy to deal with. Um, if you have any questions or whatever, I'm going to put a link to not only um, Talon Manufacturing's Guardian plates in the description, but I'm also going to include Chris's email address in the description. So if anybody has any questions or anything pertaining to like that, or if they want to order these. They can click on that link. It'll take you to um, an email to uh, send to Chris that you can send him the measurements, the style of floor you have, year, make, model, all that kind of stuff for your coach. I'm going to cover all that in these two videos. I'm going to do one on flat floor design, one on raised floor design. I'm going to cover some measurements, uh, how to take the measurements, where the critical points are to measure from, um, so you know what to send off to Chris how to measure for the width, whether you need, like on a raised floor, whether you need an RR300, RR600, RR1200. It depends, so the width, depending on what roller placement, I'm going to cover that. Um, on the flat floor, I'm going to cover where the glide bar is on the front, where these first, where these, it's critical that these first, these 25 degree angle resides in, and then where to measure back to the support bracket. So I'm going to cover all those in, in both these videos, um, but they'll be distinct whether it's a flat floor or a raised floor so please make sure um, a lot of coaches have both styles so if your coach only has one please make sure you click on the correct uh, video for your corresponding floor um, that being said let me back up and give just a little bit of brief history here I know Chris does a fantastic job covering it in his videos but um, I just want to give a brief overview the Monaco Holiday Rambler um, design, dating all the way back into the late 90s, early 2000s, they did their slides a little differently than the industry standard. The industry standard was basically you had a floor and a side wall of the slide, and it was encapsulated on a corner, uh, had a corner that was encapsulated by a trim piece or a bracket, if you will. Uh, Monaco did theirs a little differently where they on their floor, they put a piece of extruded aluminum that comes and turns up only about a half an inch, and then the sidewall resides in behind that. Well, that does a couple of things. Number one, I don't think it gives a little, lot of um, real structural support, but, but more troublesome is the fact that along that top of that half inch trim piece of that extruded aluminum is merely a bead of caulking that prevents water from running down onto that and basically going under the trim piece onto that floor, which is just a couple layers of plywood glued together. And granted, it's a solid floor, but we all know what happens when you get water introduced into plywood. It starts delaminating, you end up with floor rot. Um, that's very common on these, on these coaches. So Chris um, worked with a couple other people from, one of them was a Monaco engineer, um, uh, that worked at the plant, so very knowledgeable people, and they come up with these guardian plates. These are, these are very nice products. They are polished stainless steel. Um, every, everything in Chris's kits are all American made, from the stainless steel to the rivets, everything is, these are a very high quality kit um, product, and he uses only the best quality materials. So I, I can vouch for that after now seeing them and put, put my eyes and hands on them and, and seeing what a fine product this is. So um, this is something I'm going to, it's not only going to be structural and hold everything together and prevent water intrusion and all that, but it's actually looks, they actually look nice when they're installed. Now, our particular coach is a 2003 Monaco Dynasty. We bought it in 2007. I, I, I kind of ha had a little bit of forewarning going into Monaco's that this was problematic. So when I was looking at coaches, my wife and I were looking at coaches, this was one of the areas that I inspected very heavily. Our coach has zero floor rot issues, never has any problems. Um, however, that being said, I've gone back and about 
usually once a year, sometimes a little more frequently, as those slides are going in and out and they're flexing and they're moving. There's a lot of, there's a great deal of force involved with those moving in and out. And with that, that caulking just does not stay intact for very long. So year, sometimes a, it, give or t- a year, give or take a little bit anyway. And our coach up until a year ago resided outside, parked outside. So I was adamant and very vigilant on keeping that caulking fresh and make sure it's kept it sealed. I inspect it regularly. If any cracking or anything, I probably was a little over anal, but I would scrape the caulking out, clean it with acetone, wipe it all down, tape it off, and re- reapply caulking uh, to all three slides because I was so paranoid of water damage, water intrusion. Um, I'd been watching these, looking at these for a little bit. Uh, I've, seen, I've read some good reviews, some people on the IRV2 that have installed them, that I trust their judgment. Um, They've had them installed, and I've been very impressed with them. I was going to put them on a year and a half or so ago, maybe a couple years ago even now. But then we got caught up in the whole selling our home, moving, building a new shop. I wanted to get it done before I painted the coach, which obviously didn't happen. So now I've got freshly coated, uh, freshly uh, painted coach that stays indoors when it's not being used. But I wanted to get these put on. And I, again, I probably should have done them before I... Painted the coach, but the, the, you, you never, once they're on, you'll never, you never tell. So again, I wanted to reiterate that these are a fine product. He uses 3M in his kit, 5200 is a sealant. It's a marine sealant. This stuff is amazing. It, they use this for rep, hull repair and so forth on marine. So once you get it in place, it's there. And then just some, uh, some clear... Uh, sealant for once after the plate's all cured and everything to run a bead around the uh, around the edges so um, again this is the, this is this is just an ongoing issue with monaco uh, and holiday ramblers they just because they kind of broke away from the mold as far as the industry goes on their slide design um, the flat floor designs uh, uh, fit on and go up underneath and ro- and slide over that glide bar the raised floor design goes on, and then you have what you call roller plates, which are flat plates. And, and rollers vary anywhere from five to seven to nine inch. They're, they're, over on RV2, we kind of joke around about Monaco's being of snowflakes because they're so unique and no two are alike. I, I, re- I recognize that when I was building my suspension components, putting out my Watts link and everything on my coach. These, these are even more so. There's no rhyme or reason as far as the ones I've looked at, my own, and plus the other probably couple dozen that I've looked at over the last couple of years. There is no rhyme or reason which rollers Monaco put with which coaches. Whether it be a 5-inch, 7-inch, 9-inch, I've heard rumors of 3-inch. There's just no, there's no pattern. So that's why I want to take a little bit of time on each of these videos and show how to measure what you're looking for. And then from there, we will move on to the actual installation. So um, again, make sure you're on the, on the correct video. I'm going to do one for the raised floor and one for the flat floor. Um, the flat floor will have the angle because it has the glide bar. The raised floor will have the roller plates for the, for the rollers. So that's the easy way to keep, keep, them tra- keep them separated. Flat floor uses a glide bar that the force, that the, the, the coat or the slide, excuse me, literally goes out and drops down in flat. Easy way to keep flat floor, goes out and goes down flat. The, the raised floor is above the floor grade. That's usually your galleys, couches, so forth, that slide in and out, and those ride on rollers. Most of them, most of the rollers are going to be chassis mounted, meaning they're going to be mounted to the the, the actual coach along the uh, subframe, but a lot of the galleys and well, actually some of the some of the other slides even actually have a um, inverted roller, if you will, that rolls across the tile floor. So it'll be up in like your like if you have an, uh, uh, a peninsula style kitchen where the cabinet kind of kicks inward a little bit, it might have a roller. Um, that's where ours is at. It's inverted out underneath on that roller, or on that, on that slide where it goes in and out and it rolls on the tile. That's an inverted roller. So you need to make sure when you send Chris the email, do you have the dimensions correct, as well as how many rollers you need roller plates for. So um, again, let me go ahead and stop here. We'll go ahead and jump into, uh, go next door and jump into the measuring. This is on our 2003 Monaco Dynasty. 
This is our front um, passenger side or curbside slide. Yeah, it's not as deep as the other side. This is only about 18 inches. So I'm going to go through and um, give you a little overview on how to measure these ones. This one's not quite as critical as the flat floor that has the angle, but there are some things you, I want to make sure and point out to you on this so that when you call or email Chris to order your plates that you give him the correct information. All right, so when you're measuring for an RR or a raised, um, excuse, excuse me, RF, raised floor design, the corner guardian plates come in three different sizes. There's an RF 300, which is three inches, an RF 600, which is six inches, and an RF 1200, which is 12 inches. Now, it depends on where your rollers are at. On my coach, the first roller starts, and you can see the marks in the slide, start about right here, which are five inches from the outside edge is where the roller is. They come, the rollers there are usually seven or nine inch, um, have seen some five inch, but you'll want to make sure, all, all, of, all of his roller plates I believe are 12 inches. I think he'll custom make other ones, but they're 12 inches, so you'll, the rivets will actually go outside of where the rollers roll. Now, if you have your roller positioned closer to the outside corner, you're more than likely going to want to use an RF um, 1200, which will fully encapsulate or fully capture that roller and put the rivets on the outside. My roller, like I said, is five inches in, so I'm actually going to use the RF 300, which is a three inch plate, and then a roller plate butted almost right up next to it for, this, for my rollers. So you also want to count how many rollers you have that are chassis mounted. Um, chassis mounted meaning down on the, uh, on the coach itself, not up on the floor slide. Mine has four, that's kind of an oddity. Generally there's four total, so you'll have like three mounted to the chassis and one inverted up in the galley that rolls on your tile floor. Mine has four mounted to the chassis and one inverted. So mine's a five roller um, slide. This is an oddity. Uh, talking with Chris, he hadn't seen one like this. So um, make sure um, you make sure you, you measure them or, or count them and measure them. So you can just pull this flat down and I can see my roller very plainly right there mounted to, the, mounted to the framework and I can see right where it rides here on the white laminate underneath. So that's where my roller plate's going to go. Then I'm going to have a 3 inch, an RF 300 encapsulating the corner here. Now when you measure the length of what you need, you're going to want to measure to the center of that roller out to this outer, there's a bracket out here and you're going to want to add an inch so that the roller, the roller plate goes just beyond the roller. You don't want, as the slide comes all the way out, you don't want that roller to drop off of that roller plate and then have to come back on and off to it each time the slide goes in and out. So you're going to want your roller plate, or your, yeah, your roller plate, the order from Chris, to be about an inch longer than the center of that roller out here to this outer edge. That's how you measure those. So again, you're going to order them in an RF 300, RF 600, or RF 1200, depending on where your roller placement is this, on, this, on the front edge as well as the rear. Now, he can mix and match. So if you have, like I, say, like I do here, I'm going to use an RF 300 and a roller plate. Say at the other end, the roller is right to the edge. You can use, you just have to make sure and specify to Chris that you want the front edge an RF 300 and the rear an RF 1200 or a 600, whatever size roller you have. So you want the roller plate to be wider than the roller itself. So the roller is not actually rolling on the heads of the rivets. So that's uh, pretty much the critical measurement on these. Um, other than that, they're pretty pretty much identical to uh, the prepping and everything on this front edge. I'll go ahead and show that, but I wanted to really cover the measurement side and really drive home the measuring on this so that you can make sure and order number one, the correct size of roller or of um, guardian plate for the corners and also the proper number and size of the roller plates for however many 
rollers you have on your coach. Now one more um, distinction on mine. Mine has a lock mechanism on this slide, so I'm actually going to take and pull these couple, these two screws out and pivot this block up out of the way so I can trim this bottom plate out of the, this bottom corner out of the way, get it all prepped, and then once I get it all glued and back down into place, then I'll go ahead and pivot this block back down and put the screws back in. I'll more than likely have to drill a hole through the um, stainless steel guardian plate on the corner here, um, but that's, that's not that big a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those screws out, pivot this up out of the way. Now what we want to do is same we did on the same thing we did on the flat floor. This corner piece here, we're going to want to cut the, the sealant. Then we're going to want to get a die grinder up underneath the back side, and we're going to want to take this corner piece off because this extrusion is what's sitting on top of the floor. Again, my floor is rock solid. I don't have any delamination. If you have delamination, what you're going to want to do is right before you get ready to glue it, is you're going to want to pry down a little bit and squirt some of that 5200 up inside of there so that when you put that guardian plate on, it encapsulates it and, and will just evenly distribute that 5200 throughout there so it'll, when it cures, it bonds and that will, that will correct your um, floor rot. Uh, issue if you have minor floor rot. Again, my floor is solid. I've been staying up on top of this sealant. I'm doing it solely as uh, precautionary. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way and then we'll come back in and trim this um, corner piece out of the way. And I've, I've got, I'm using the RF 300, which is a three inch, one and a half inch high by three inch underneath on both front and rear. So I'll get those put in and then I'll go through and put the roller plates. When I put the roller plates, I mark on the outside of the, underneath the wall where the roller is. Then I'll lift up just a little bit with a porta power to get that up away from the roller, put the roller plate up in so that the rivets are outside of the path of the roller. And then I'll go ahead and mark it, clean everything with acetone, um, glue up, put the 5200 on the roller plate and assemble it, um, go ahead and rivet it back into, rivet it into place and move on to the next one. So I have four roller plates to put underneath this slide as well as the two RF300 corner, corner pieces. So I've run some painter's tape along here. Now I'm just taking my utility knife and cutting that sealant. Again, I've kept up on my sealant pretty good on this so I have no floor rot issues. But I'm just going through and cutting that sealant. Now I'm going to take a die grinder and we'll go ahead in the back side there. Alright, so I've got it cut. The sealant cut through here. Now with the die grinder, you're going to want to keep it fit up at an angle. And you want to come in and just go on the back side of this little trim piece here. This little half inch trim piece. And that's what we're actually going to cut off. So I'm going to cut the corner there. Got the corner down here. So here's the piece I've got removed, and you can see. It comes right off, and there's, there, it reveals the extruded aluminum piece. Now this leather little piece is the one you've got to really get back in behind there. I'm just going to peel off that last little bit of old sealant, old caulking, and then I'm going to take and get a hammer and drive. I guess got an old gasket scraper here that's hardened, so I sharpened it up a little bit, and it actually cuts through that aluminum channel pretty decent and it will go back inside of there and you want to get that last little couple inches piece out of there. The slide where it doesn't come out quite as far is a little more um, confined here so you kind of have to be careful in your, with your, tool, in your air tools around here because you don't want to scratch the paint on your coach. So I've got all the sealant removed. I'll cut back in and deburr and clean up that aluminum 
channel and then this side is about ready is pr about prepped and ready for a corner a guardian plate a little more prep work here and so we're going to go in now and we're going to get this corner Okay, I felt it hit the end, and there's and there it is. So you can see I just cut it nice and clean with the, you can use a putty knife, you can use whatever, but you just gotta get that last little corner piece back in there off, and it's not that big a deal. This one, I like this one because it's flat, and it'll follow it right in. So now I'm just gonna come along and Clean up this bottom extrusion. Now again, if you had floor rot with your coach, if you have floor rot with your coach and are experiencing that, this bottom piece of laminate and plywood is going to actually be hanging down. So you're going to want to prep that, clean it up the best you can in order to make ready to accept the uh, 5200 adhesive from the, the 3M, but like I said, mine's solid. It has no uh, indications of pulling away. So I am just going to go ahead, peel this little bit of tape off, and get it prepped with some acetone. Go ahead and run a deburring tool. It, doesn't, it probably doesn't really matter once it's all encapsulated, you're not going to have any sharp edges, but. Now when you're fitting these corner pieces, and it doesn't matter whether it's a 300, 12, 600, or 1200, this front corner that goes in, it varies from coach to coach. So when you order these from Chris, they're going to come just like this, and you're going to have to notch this back to wherever it fits your coach. So I had my son go up inside, I pulled the gaskets down, and ran up there and, and, put a, and, and kind of put a screwdriver tip to the end of where that inside corner is. So if you take a screwdriver also and run it along the wall there, you can feel where it hits. You can actually hear it. That's the inside trim piece. It's not in very far. What is that? Inch and three quarter? Inch and a half? So that's all that goes in is inch and a half. The bottom will be fine because it, it's going to sit up underneath. But you're going to have to cut this back to wherever this it will allow this to go in and butt up against that inner piece that you just saw me hit with a screwdriver. So we need to come back and notch this back. There's a couple ways you can do with that. You can go ahead and keep test fitting it up there and cut it, keep trimming it back. Or what I did is took a tape measure. If you have the room, have a tape measure. You can snake it up in there and you can see right where it hits and it's an inch and a half then measure it back and I'm 18 right on the money so if I trim mine at 18 inches and notch it then I can sneak up in there and hopefully I should be right on the money so I'm going to go ahead and mark it at 18 inches cut it and then come back and do a test fit all right so successful test fit 
everything's in there nice and solid. I'm bumped right up against that inner trim piece. This one rivet looks like it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to get to, but I might have to get creative on that. I did have to notch about 3 eighths of an inch because I've got a one inch square tube running the length of the slide underneath here. So I had to make a little adjustment for that. So I'll go re-drill the hole, I'll measure in, so I get the placement of my rivet in the same place um, for this other rivet. So I cut right through the center of that rivet hole. So then uh, I can wipe this down with acetone and this one's ready to install. And while I'm right here and I've got the slide lifted up, I'm gonna wipe everything down within about 16 inches under and I'm gonna go ahead and put my roller plate um, under and secure it in place wall all at the same time. Okay, there again, if you have delamination problems, now is the time to uh, get in there and address it. I'm just going to fill up this extrusion because I don't have any um, delaminating issues here. So I'm just going to fill up this extrusion. And then I've got a... Uh, quite a bit on the bottom of the uh, actual guardian plate. Okay. There it is on the guardian plate. I'll put it up into place and then start drilling it and riveting. So I can do this without wearing it. Okay, right there, I can feel it bumping up against the uh, vertical piece inside, which is exactly where I wanted it. So. Push that up into place. Chris does a really good job of mark of uh, hitting the mark on the tubing inside of these. see the and that's all there is to it again you're going to want this this style of rivet gun the other one i had a couple of rivets on my uh it was couldn't clear my arm so i had to use the hand one and uh i did i think i did three of them trust me you don't want to have to use a hand one on that so i'm going to go ahead and finish up these rivets. Now, as I say, the small headed ones go out here. The big, large ones go underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, finish up the rest of these rivets. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put my roller plate in while I'm right here. All right, so I've got my roller plate while it's already up in the air here. I'm going to go ahead and get my roller plate in place. Now, I've mar marked it where I need to center it, where my roller is. So I'm going to center it there. So I'm just going to pull the rubber down a little bit. I've already wiped everything down. I'm going to slide that up in. And it's actually going to come out almost right to the... It's going to come out almost right to the um, guardian plate. I'm like standing on your head working, huh? Okay. So. Again, big rivets, big headed rivets. Go on the bottom. And I've got it marked. So I've got about a quarter of an inch gap. between, got about a quarter of an inch gap, hopefully I'm not sure if it'll show up, 
between the guardian plate and the roller plate. The roller will actually roll five inches. So one and a, oh, one and an eighth inch from the center of the rivet. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these installed. And then I'll uh, move on to the rear and the slide's done. All right, there's a shot of the underside of the guardian plate and the roller plate. The roller will ride about an inch, probably three quarters of an inch, uh, maybe a little more away from the center of that rivet, or from the edge of the rivet, one and an eighth from the center. All right, so that concludes the uh, guardian plate installation on a raised floor uh, Monaco coach. Again, this will be the same for Monaco and Holiday Rambler. So just recap, I use the RF for raised floor 300, which is three inches underneath, one and a half inch. And then I place a roller plate right next to that with maybe a quarter of an inch spacing between it. The same thing at the other end. Um, and then uh, two additional roller plates in the middle for a total of four roller plates and two RF 300 uh, corner caps. So that should prevent any water intrusion down the road and help secure that corner. So uh, it's got 120, almost 120,000 on 117, 18, something like that. And it's a 2003, so hopefully she's got a lot of life left in her. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was informative. And again, get a hold of Chris at Talon Manufacturing. He's great to deal with, and he produces a hell of a nice product. It not only is functional, but it actually is aesthetically pleasing and looks very nice, uh, complements it nicely. Thanks for watching.